Hey guys, my name is Bailey Sarian. Okay, so last week I uploaded a video of me getting ready and I was talking about the Chris Watts case. The reason I talked about the Chris Watts case is because how heavily invested I've been in it. I guess I could start doing my makeup. A lot of you guys were telling me how much you watch like Dateline 2020. There are tons of podcasts out there that talk about crime, murder. Yes, I listen to them. Some of them are like too dark for me, but for the most part, I do listen to a lot of those podcasts. I watch a lot of those shows and I don't know what it is. I think it's just being curious as to why. I think we're always looking for the answer, but I find myself getting heavily invested. It keeps me up at night. So I just wanted to really come on here and talk about it for anyone out there who was also interested in this case, because I don't have anyone in my life who is as heavily invested as I am. So it was nice to know that I'm not the only one who's sitting up late at night, Googling about a certain crime that has happened. So I appreciate all the, the positive feedback on my last video. So I think we're gonna, on Mondays, we're going to have murder, mystery, and makeup where I sit here and I tell you about a crime that has my interest. I get ready, maybe you get ready at home. We get ready together. I'm gonna try and make it a thing. Regarding Chris Watts though, I feel like I could go on forever about that case because there's so much to it. Barely touched the surface, right? Thought about doing like a Chris Watts final thoughts or something. Things that I wanted to say, but the video was already getting so long. Today, I thought I would bring it back to my hometown. Good old Menifee, California. Menifee, California is a small, well, it used to be a small little town. Now it's pretty, it's pretty damn big. And this case happened back in 2013, so it's really not that old. But I remember reading about it one night and it just like kind of caught my interest, never really found out what happened and it wasn't far from me. So today I'm going to talk about Darlene Flynn of Menifee, California. She was also known as the shoe lady or the queen of soul. So for over 12 years, Darlene had been building a collection of over 15,000 shoe related items, which was verified by the Guinness Book of World Record in 2006. So she made it into the Guinness Book, Book of World Record for owning a bunch of shoes and shoe related stuff. Many like shoe ornaments, pictures of shoes on her wall. She had shoe shaped furniture. She had a shoe tattoo. She just loved shoes. She found her passion in life, which I am not judging because she just found that thing. And I understand you just love something and you need everything to be that thing. A shoe just had to be on her body at all times. Okay, take a shot for every time I say shoe. Now out of those 15,000 shoes she owned, only a hundred of them were actual shoes that she could wear. There's a show on TLC, or there was, I don't know if it's still on, it was called My Collection Obsession, and Darlene was actually featured on that show. She's very proud of it. She loved it, it made her happy, and hey, life is too short. If something makes you happy, go for it. Darlene said that her obsession started back in 2001 when she divorced from her husband at the time. She went over to her friend's house. Friend had a collection of miniature shoes as well. She was inspired by it. So she decided, Darlene, decided that she, she was gonna do this. She was like, my friend's into it, I'm gonna do it. Darlene was quoted saying that it gave her something to focus on besides the breakup. Cause you know, breakups are not easy. She just wanted to focus her energy on something else. I swear this won't turn into 10 minutes of me putting on concealer. She didn't have many answers as to why it was shoes. It just was. Darlene's end goal was to open up her own museum to showcase all of the different collectible items that she's purchased uh, over the years. She had traveled to over like 22 countries and she even had a, a shoe exhibit in Hong Kong which I found was really interesting. I couldn't really find much information about it. Darlene loved going out. She liked socializing. One night she decided she was gonna put on her sexy light up shoes. Those are her quotes, sexy light up shoes. And she was gonna go to a local bar, the Ponderosa. Now let me tell you something about the Ponderosa and I can say this because I've been there a bajillion times. It's like that little hole in the wall bar. It's dark, it's dingy. It wasn't like Cheers. It was an unsafe Cheers. Right next door was where they had the AA meetings and after AA, everyone would go to the Ponderosa. I can criticize the Ponderosa because I was there a lot, okay? There's nothing to do in Menifee at the time. 
not a lot of places to meet men. So she went to the Ponderosa and that's where she caught the attention of Justin Smith. At the time was 29, Darlene was 58. Based off pictures of Justin, he looks so much older than 29. Not that it matters, sorry. Okay, Justin had said that the light up shoes caught his attention and they end up dancing all night. It wasn't soon after that Justin ended up moving in with Darlene. I tried to pull up some information on Justin. There really wasn't much about him. Like I couldn't figure out if he had a job or not. Based off his actions, it seems like he did not have a job. That's why he was so quick to move in with Darlene. That's my opinion. Darlene went from being a local celebrity to being a worldwide celebrity when she was on that TLC show my collection obsession. So Darlene was getting ready for this show because the TLC crew was coming down to film. So she deep cleaned her house. She cleaned every single little piece that she had. Her boyfriend, Justin, was there living with her. Apparently they would fight a lot because first thing she would say in the morning was something along the line, like it was always shoe related. He was reported saying that he was, it was cool at first and then as time went on, it started to drive him a little, a little crazy but he put up with it, I'm assuming, because probably needed a place to live. I guess I shouldn't make assumptions. In the episode, Darlene shows her whole collection, but then also Justin's there with her. There's this part where like he's wearing, he's not wearing any clothes, he's just wearing an apron and he's like serving Darlene a shoe shaped breakfast, eggs and bacon, and then he folds it up, serves it to her. I think he was probably getting a little burnt out on the shoes. Money was a big issue between Darlene and Justin. Apparently he'd be borrowing money from Darlene or he would just take things without her knowing. She would obviously get pissed. The neighbors reported that they were constantly fighting, that they would hear them fighting all the time. Justin took Darlene's car and decided to sell it without her knowledge. And he came up on around $7,500. Darlene, obviously upset because this is her car, called the police, which then led to a misdemeanor conviction for grand theft in 2012. He was sentenced to three years probation. Part of the probation was to not have any negative contact with Darlene, which like, what does that even mean? Darlene still allowed Justin to be living with her. You think she would kick him out, but her family members reported Darlene said she felt bad for Justin because he didn't have anywhere else to go and she didn't want to kick him out because she just felt bad. Darlene's family constantly told her that she needs to get him out. She needed to move on, but she just couldn't let go. After the incident, the neighbors reported saying that Darlene and Justin, their fighting had gotten way worse and that they told Darlene she needs to start thinking of herself and to kick him out. In July of 2013, they were still living together, but they decided to just end the relationship. So they were no longer a couple. Justin just became became the roommate. From my understanding, he just did like chores around the house to make up for the money that he got for the car and he stole from Darlene. Uh, Justin said in an interview that Darlene was really bossy and always yelled at him and made him feel like crap. She kind of had a good reason to though, buddy. So pretty much Justin is a mooch and will not take responsibility for himself. Just like many other bad guys out there, he's trying to say that Darlene was controlling and mean to him. On July 21st, there was another argument. This time it was over $50. He's still taking her money. Justin decided to help a friend move. He took $50 to fill up the gas tank, which doesn't sound that bad. It actually sounds nice. But when you think about it, it was Darlene's money. It's not his money. He didn't ask. They're not together. No, Darlene was just exhausted of Justin constantly taking advantage of her, living in her house for free, and she just couldn't take it anymore. They got into a huge argument, and this time police were called, thanks to the neighbors, because the neighbors heard them fighting, but this time it was different. It sounded a lot more aggressive and a lot more angry. So police arrived at the home around 2 p.m. When they got there, they knocked on the door, nobody answered, so they kind of like took a look around and they saw a man in the garage surrounded by shoe boxes, and he was naked. He then bolted, it was Justin, and eventually police caught him down the street. He didn't make it that far, 
Okay. Police search the house. They come across a body in the pool face down. When they pull the body out and examine it, they see that she has head trauma. Justin was taken in by police and held on a million dollar bail. He told police that he didn't know what happened. He blacked out. He said he just lost it. In an interview with police, he said Darlene started pounding him in the chest with her fists that she threw Tupperware at him. He asked her to calm down and he went to bed. This was the night before. The next day, Justin said that Darlene started shoving him down the hallway saying, you're an idiot, you're garbage, and to get out. She also went on to say that he was lazy and just making him feel bad. Justin said, she was making me feel like the bad guy. I wonder why, dude. Off note, one of my biggest pet peeves, I think, well, probably everyone's pet peeve, is like, if you murder somebody, if you kill somebody and you're caught and you're in police custody, why is it so hard to be honest? Killers never take full responsibility. Well, rarely, I shouldn't say never. They always try to deflect and be like, well, they started it first. Justin said that that same day was planning on leaving and moving out that day. I'm so sure, but he just snapped. So while he was leaving the house, in the corner of the living room, they had a baseball bat and they used that for protection if somebody broke into their house. Now the area that they lived in was actually like not the best area. So they had a couple of items just in case someone broke in that they could easily get to and defend themselves. So Justin went and grabbed the baseball bat. Darlene was sitting at the shallow end of the pool and Justin came behind her. This is a little graphic, but he, he hit her in the back of the head five to six times. Justin said that she then tried to still get up and then he hit her again until the bat broke over her head. Poor Darlene. And then Justin walked back into the house and ate lunch. Sadly, Darlene did not make it. When cops found her, they said that she was like unrecognizable. Justin's lawyers insisted that he did not mean to kill Darlene and was hoping to get him a lighter sentence. Prosecution said that he knew exactly what he was doing. Darlene was relaxing in the pool when Justin came up behind her. Prosecutors wanted to get first degree murder conviction, but Justin maintained that he did not intentionally mean to kill her. He just had no control. The jury ended up finding Justin guilty of second degree murder and he was sentenced 16 years to life. The judge said that it was one of the most violent cases they had seen and just really sad. And that's the end of that story. I hope Darlene is resting in peace. I hope she's surrounded with things that like a bunch of shoes. She just seems like such a nice person. She found her passion in life. She was minding her own business. And then this shithead took it all from her. All of Darlene's shoes, like her whole collection got auctioned off. That's where I first heard about this case was looking at estate sales. And I had saw that there was one that had a ton of shoe stuff. And I was like, what is this? And then I read more into it. And that's where I first learned about the case. I wanted to share that one because, you know, it's from my hometown and it was just one that I never really fully looked into, so I did. And I want to learn a little bit more about Darlene. Thank you guys so much for hanging out with me, listening to this awful story. Let me know your thoughts down below in the comment section. I love hearing from you guys and what you think. But most of all, make good choices. Be safe out there. Take care of yourself, you. I hope you have a good day today and I will be seeing you guys later. Bye.